Welcome back to another edition of Myth Badger Videos. We're going to take the lead screw that we built in a prior video and examine it to understand the mechanics of how it works. Before we do that, let's remind ourselves of our two components here. We have the worm gear here and we have the lead screw nut there. And these are the two components that we're going to be looking at as we examine this gear. So the first thing that we want to do is identify the input and output. So looking at this assembly, which of these do you feel is the input? If you identified the worm gear as the input, you would be correct. You may have noticed that the handle is over here, and the handle is connected to the dry shaft, and the dry shaft is running through the worm gear. So as I turn this, it's the worm gear I'm directly manipulating. So the worm gears are input, the lead screw nut is our output. Now let's talk about type of motion. In this gear system, we actually see the type of motion changing from the input to the output. So I'm going to turn this and I want you to see if you can identify the type of motion in one or both of the components. So what type of motion was in the worm gear? If you identified rotary motion, you are correct because it was turning in a circle. But what about the output? The output was moving in a linear direction. It's moving in a straight line going this way. So we are seeing a change from rotary to linear motion. Now let's talk a little bit about gear ratio. Gear ratio is not so easy to calculate in this system. We can't exactly use the formula we use for, say, the simple gear. So instead, we want to look at how many revolutions of the input does it take to make the output move one inch. So for that, I've got a ruler. And I'm going to line the ruler up here. And I'm going to line the ruler up so that the front of the whole output assembly is lined up on 8. And now what I'm going to do is, I'm, and let me get the handle just where I want it, and I'm going to, we want to see how many revolutions does it take to get this whole assembly lined up with 7. So I'm going to go ahead and turn and you count. And you may notice that it took about 5 revolutions to get there. Now, I've seen a couple of issues with this. Occasionally, if this is not perfectly built, um, if there's any gaps here, if the ruler moves, if any of this assembly moves, what we'll find is that we may not get exactly five. Sometimes you get a little higher, sometimes a little less. But it seems to be when I've done this multiple times, the average is five revolutions to get one inch out of the output. That's about the best we can do in terms of giving an equivalent to gear ratio. Now, knowing that, would you say that this system is geared for speed or for force? If you're identifying force, you would be correct. Now, one might ask, why did I say force instead of torque? We've used torque with some of our other systems. The reason why is because this is linear motion. So linear motion means we're not going to use torque since torque is force applied in a circular direction. If there's no circular direction, it's just plain force. So this is a system geared for force, but one might ask, what's the benefit of this? Well, imagine we're in, say, a warehouse or a factory, and we need to move something that's really, really heavy. Well, a lead screw might be a great system to use. So here we've got a platform sitting on top. And let's say we've got a heavy object. Imagine that this handle is heavy, and I need to move it from here over to there. Now, I could get a bunch of people to do that, but if it's really, really heavy, it's going to take a lot of people to do that. And instead, I'm going to need a machine in order to help move it. So instead, I can place it on a device like this. And when I move that handle, or let's say I have a motor attached to it, that motor will help to move it. And the motor can handle a lot greater force than I can. So instead of having a bunch of people, I have one person with a machine. And that one person turns the machine on and moves that whole thing to the other end. So now let's talk about flow of power. Since we're talking about moving something heavy by using the power of the system, is the flow of power of this reversible? Now, reminder, the rever flow of power being reversible means that if I were to push on this, I can make the input rotate. So what do you think is going to happen? Let's give it a shot. You'll notice that it's not moving at all which means that for this system, the flow of power is not reversible. But what about direction of travel? Can I turn the handle both ways? Can I move forward and reverse? 
So here's one. What if I go this way? So we see here that the flow of power, or the thought flow of power, the direction of travel is actually reversible on this system. Let's review. In looking at our lead screw, we find that it actually changes our type of motion. So we have rotary motion in the input, but we get linear motion in the output. We cannot use a traditional gear ratio formula because of the design of the lead screw nut. So instead, we look at how many revolutions of the input it takes to move the output one inch. We found in this case, it seems to be five revolutions per inch. Based on the design of this, we find that it is geared for force instead of speed. And we use force instead of torque because this moves in a linear motion instead of rotary motion. We find that the flow of power of this system is not reversible, but if we look at the direction of travel, we find it is reversible. Thank you for watching. Feel free to hit that subscribe button to keep up with all future tutorials here at MythBadger Videos.